there in YouTube land. What's going on? We're back here at Calgary Barbell just wrapping up the week's training. Uh, as some of you may or may not be able to tell, we've gone from twice a week with the training logs to once a week. We're gonna try and make an effort to put out something more educational, like our, uh, our mobility routine that we put out earlier this week, as well as this to kind of break up the monotony so it's not just a bunch of training logs. Uh, also, that gives me more to talk about in each training log, so I think the quality of each video individually is gonna go up. So to run through this week really quick, we've started doing some lighter pause squats on day one, just to sort of prime uh, my system. We thought we, there might be some correlation between squatting the first day of the week and then having the second squat day of the week, feeling better, feeling tighter, feeling better grooved. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case this week, but we'll get into that when we get further through the week. Uh, now the other thing I did on Monday was my shirted bench and I got 220 kilos to close enough to my chest that I probably should have touched it, but I got a little freaked out because uh, I was concerned it was just gonna dump the rest of the way. So I'm trying to learn that sort of controlled dump in the shirt and that belly touch kind of thing. Uh, I don't have a belly and I have very long arms, so that makes it uh, it's tough for me to bench as most people would in a low cut collar shirt. So uh, I got 220 kilos, almost touched it, and they got 225 to about a one board, and that went up pretty well actually as well. Uh, Tuesday I came in, did my competition deadlifts, and worked up to 357.5 kilos. Now locking my knees first on these seem to make a really, really big difference. Um, if you check out my Instagram, at Calgary Barbell, you can see I film, I'm filming all my deadlifts right now from a side angle, so I can see how things are moving towards my lockout, so I make sure I don't get it back into that same issue of catching my hand, opening it up, or misgrooving at lockout. So hopefully next week, I'm thinking if I'm feeling good, I'm probably gonna take a stab at 800, but we'll see. I hate to put my foot in my mouth with stuff like that. Wednesday came in, had probably the best, uh, the best incline presses I've done in a long time. Uh, unfortunately, I think that contributed to a lot of fatigue in my competition bench on Thursday, but those felt really good, so I'm gonna take that as a win. Competition bench Thursday, as well as competition squats, raw squats, and raw squats, not good at all. Uh, I've, I'm learning more every time I do it. It came in, you know, it hurt, couldn't find my groove. Once I got to my working weights, you know, warm-ups always feel really, really good, but got up to my working weight, Everything felt kind of garbage, couldn't, uh, couldn't keep my groove, hip was hurting. So uh, talking to Rory further as I went through that day and I've started really slowing down my lockout. That may or may not be a mechanic for the injury or at least for aggravating the injury, but I find if I lock out almost snail's pace slow, I can fire things in the right sequence to make sure that my hip isn't hurting as I lock out. So you'll see some of the squats and I'll be pretty much crawling through the lockout. It's a really hard cue to use, because it's like, if I were to coach you and teach you to use this cue, I'd be saying, okay, when it starts to get hard, when you hit that sticking point, just slow down. So needless to say, they feel like crap, but a lot less pain if I do it that way. So I'm gonna continue with that, and hopefully be able to sort of rebuild that movement pattern with a slower lockout, being more purposeful as I finish the lift. Today came in and everything was against chains. Deadlifted 312.5 kilos with about 45 kilos of chains. That moved really well. Uh, set of four at 275, 272 and a half. Uh, and then did some chain two board bench, which everything felt really heavy today, so I didn't get up to the weights that I was hoping to hit, but got some good work in. Moving on to the question of the day today. We've had a couple people on the last video ask about my accessory work. Uh, we had Giovanni Nunez and Eric Brabants ask about my accessory work. Wondering if I do much stuff with dumbbells, cables, etc., beyond what you guys normally see. And the answer is pretty much no. Um, the way that my programming is in my developmental blocks, which are uh, sort of the driving force of my programming right now. So just, just to sort of preface this a little bit, my programming right now is I go through a developmental block where everything's very carefully selected to to get a specific adaptation out of that training cycle. So what I do is I repeat the same training week, essentially, for a, a set number of weeks to build up to a peak in these certain adaptations. And then we do what's called a washout block where we're getting a lot less specific in terms of reps and exercise selection. So in the developmental blocks, my five day split goes, day one is squat bench, day two is deadlift bench, day three is bench row, 
day four is squat bench, and day five is deadlift bench. Uh, and outside of that, I'm doing a little bit of extra arm work uh, because of this stupid arms race thing that I'm kicking Dylan's ass at. Uh, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but my arms are looking sick, and Dylan's are looking like wet noodles, so. Anyways, getting back to the topic at hand. I don't do a whole lot of accessory work, especially in my developmental blocks. I do more non-specific things in my washout blocks. I'll do pause deadlifts for sets of 10. I'll do a lot of feet up bench and a lot less specific stuff, more back work, some vertical pulls, some chin ups, uh, that kind of stuff. So that stuff does get worked in. It's just when and where uh, and, and how it fits into the overall program that will change sort of based on the focus of the block that I'm in. Now, when I program for athletes myself, so the programming that I do for others, I generally include a little bit more uh, accessory work sprinkled in, and that's just my own preference. Um, there's, there's a line between what I have done for me and then what I think best practice is for others. Now, just because those two things don't align doesn't mean I don't trust my coach. It just means when I program for others, these are the things that I've seen as a coach that work for you know, uh, injury prevention, for maintaining general strength, uh, for maintaining, you know, a little bit more muscle, or trying to push for a little bit more muscle mass through a training cycle via added volume in, you know, less specific lifts. But just to reiterate, that doesn't shake my confidence in my coach doing what he thinks is best for me. So I follow that. I do things a little bit differently for my clients, but that's generally the way it goes. If I just copied Mike's programming, I wouldn't be a very good coach, would I? Anyways guys, that's it for today. I got a little bit jabbery. Hopefully you can use some of that information and appreciate the full week's training wrap up. But we will see you guys next time. Please leave a like on the video. Thanks to all our subscribers. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks to everybody who's been putting in orders in our online store and ordering merch. I love seeing people posting pictures of themselves in our stuff on Instagram and, and wherever else. It's super, super cool to see. And we're really glad to have that support. Dylan just hit the camera with his leg. We'll see you guys next time.